Welcome to Strata Tree Gear. Today I'm talking a little bit, a little bit about one of my hobbies, Alaska milling. I get a lot of logs, a lot of cast off. Uh, sometimes they're really cool logs with a lot of, a lot of grain and structure to them. And so sometimes I'll take them home and mill them up and make cool stuff out of them. And uh, you might enjoy it yourself. I've got a cool product here, the Granberg Alaska Mill that I've been playing with the last couple years. And uh, anyone working in the trees who has access to this kind of raw material can make some cool side hustle money or just have some fun projects by themselves playing around with Alaska Mill. So I want to show you a little bit about that. Check it out. So for the price of what is one nice slab, you can actually buy the tools to cut slabs out of your own trees. So us guys in the tree industry, this is, we should all have one of these in our back pocket. Um, this one is made by Granberg. There's a few other com companies that make them, but it's called an Alaska mill. And uh, they, I think they call it that because in Alaska, you gotta have a chainsaw. And anyone who has a chainsaw can use it to, to mill some fairly straight and true slabs. Um, it doesn't leave a really nice surface finish. It's a lot of touch up to make it something like furniture quality, but you can at least cut some big old slabs out of some big logs. And it functions fairly uh, simply, it's just like this. So what you get is this system that mounts to the bar of your chainsaw. This is a 32 inch bar I've got on my uh, 461. And I wouldn't recommend doing big milling with any saw much smaller. If you're gonna do a little log here or there, you can get away with a size or two smaller, but. You want to be on a big saw with a lot of torque. 461, MS660, uh, or the Husky 572, or the 592 XP, you know, or bigger. Those are going to be good saws for milling. Even a, a still 880 would be a good saw. But the idea is simple. So I've got this aluminum support that is parallel to the bar that maintains a constant gap between the aluminum and the bar itself. And so what I do is set up a rail on top of my log and I the rail rides on these aluminum supports and it maintains a consistent level as I bring the cut across the log and so that cuts a relatively flat slab. After that first cut is made I pull off what's called the scab and then I can just slide this right across the top of the last cut and it does another nice parallel cut so long as the teeth are nice and sharp and you're not you know your technique is good. Uh, but you can go through and cut several slabs off. If I want to adjust the thickness of the slab, I tweak this uh, setting right here. I loosen these two nuts up here and these two nuts up here, and I can actually change the height difference between the railing and the bar itself. And that adjusts the height. One of the tricks and, and challenges I've had with this Alaska mill is the tendency for the bar to come un- uh, for the bolts to loosen up with the vibrations and for it to start wiggling it around. And so one of the tricks I found, and you can just barely see it in here, but I clamped a small screw, just the top of a screw, uh, right down the middle of the bar. So it's concentrating the clamping force of this attachment point on the tip of the bar right down the middle, rather than spreading it out over this area of this full rectangle. And that makes a huge difference because this, the chain needs to spin freely, but this clamping force can actually pinch the tip so much so that it impedes the movement of the chain and really wears out your saw fast. And so by clamping that one little piece in there, it concentrates the force in that one central spot away from all the rivets, and it keeps me from pinching the tip of the bar and lets this thing spin nice and smooth uh, while still not vibrating free. So that's a little, little trick for you guys there. I'll show you how this thing kind of works over here on the rail. It's just a little 13 millimeter, which is the same socket that you usually have on the smaller end of one of those combination, combination scrunches or spanners that you uh, come with your chainsaw. Usually one of those two sizes of 13 mil, which is what this is. All right, so once those are loosened up a little bit, I can adjust the height of the saw parallel. 
So you can kind of see here how this railing is going to keep a constant height between the bar and the rail. And that lets me make a, a cut a flat plane off the top of this relatively uneven log. So you make your first cut brah, right down the railing and then you slide that off and then every other cut I can actually use the log itself as the railing and you don't need this, uh, this extra piece on here. Right now, I, this piece I've got on here is a, is a specially made rail that kind of mounts up to the log really easily. It's just got some adjustments that you tweak to set the height and then you pound in these little, uh, these little attachment points that just dig into the log. And it makes the setup pretty easy, but most guys I've seen doing this will literally just throw an old aluminum ladder on the log, put a few screws in the side and away they go. Um, and so that's a totally good option too. If you just got an aluminum ladder lying around, it's going to be cheaper than this aluminum rail setup, but it's just so much quicker for me to use. That's what I use. So that's Alaska milling. It's a great way to use up some of the materials that come off the job. It's a good little side hustle if you want to be creative and do something fun and feel like you're recycling and reusing what would otherwise go to waste. Um, if you're a part-time tree service or you're looking to try and start a little part-time tree service or maybe contract climbing business for yourself, uh, I've got a class. It's a live webinar class that's going to be going on next month. It's a three-day thing. Uh, it's called the Part-Time Arborist Academy. I'm going to go through all the basics of what it takes to start a little part-time tree service. And that's coming up in April. Uh, and then stridertrees.com, we've got lots of other resources for you guys out there working in the trees. So check that out as well. Hope you found this valuable and I'll see you next time.